and then you'll probably want to mute the stream. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, let's let's get into it. Do you want to introduce yourself and talk about like how you got into three D and all that jazz? Um, yeah, sure. Um, so I'm Chris. Um, I'm currently a final year student. Um, and I started doing three D probably like I don't know, like six years ago maybe. But I only really got into like environments and I guess actually trying probably like three four years ago. Uh, my first two years were like college, and you know, I mean, college they don't really teach you anything. Um, in university, <laughs> it's, <laughs> university. Oh, this is the UK, any, UK anyway. In university, it's kind of like the real deal, and that's kind of where I started actually uh, making art, I guess. Nice. Yeah, I'm seeing you've already got like a, a 80 level interview breakdown as well. Yeah, I've got I mean, the, little, the crazy. Yeah, the yeah go crazy ahead. Crazy thing about this is. Um, all of these pieces, apart from one, I made in like the last nine months. Oh so, my god! Yeah, it it's all come together like ridiculously fast. Um, Dude, that's crazy. I mean, yeah. I think when so when I was in school, it was like uh, it was a lot of learning and like studies that were happening in the in the class, right? Yeah. But but yeah. then it was like, well, none of that. If I just use that in my portfolio, which everyone you should never do your portfolio yeah. is just going to look like a bunch of assignments and for anyone yeah. else that doesn't have anything to do their portfolio is going to look just like yours um yeah. so i think it was what i think it was the last five months of four years in university that i just made a portfolio from scratch yeah Dude, I, I mean it's it the way to go yeah it's pretty intense man but uh dude, so that's that's crazy. Um, is there any ones that you want to start on particularly, or like, what's the one that uh, you said is not too new? Is it the tail? Uh, it's the mirror's tail because this one's quite. I mean, it's a bit weird. That's why it's so during my placement year, um, we did this thing. At my university does this thing where they employ students to work in like an in-house university game studio. Well, oh. um, so like me and like seven of the students got together for a placement year and we made this like 3D platformer game. And that's why it looks completely different to like the rest of my portfolio. Because yeah. obviously we, we had to like, you know, we had to decide on an art style together and kind of work on something. So right. I, I kind of just shoved that off to the side. I mean, people love to talk about it because um, it's so different. But yeah, it's crazy. Interesting. Da okay, so... So it was a team of, of students building a game, basically. Yeah. I can kind of see the idea that the school had for that, just because it's yeah, like, it's trying to simulate the work environment. Yeah, it's because it's like, it's so hard to get like an industry placement, um, especially like what, second year of university, you, like, you haven't really made much in like two years of university or not to a decent quality. Mm. Um, like I couldn't, I couldn't find a placement at all. Um, so I applied for this and I got on, um, but yeah. That is so interesting. Yeah. It's even on, so you've actually released a game then is what you're saying. Um, yeah. I mean, I think we're still actually working on it in the background, like fixing mainly books, but yeah. yeah, it will be released on steam eventually. Dude, that's crazy. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I would, yeah, leave that in there. That's cool. That's like an interesting, uh, the fact that it's on Steam as well, or will be released, is quite quite impressive. It's good that the uh, the articles is in the uh, in the end here, uh, just mainly because the the framing is is the same as the the waterfall bridge. I would say maybe if um, this is like a great opportunity for the for you to use the same scene but from a different angle to get people to want to click on the scene more. Oh yeah. It's like you, you get like a, a sneaky, it's like a, it's like a cheeky ad for, <laughs> for the other scene. Yeah. <laughs> just, just slightly blur the thumbnail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the A level one. <laughs> but uh, should we, you want to look at the camera and then we'll just go forward from there. Is it, is uh, it in a, like a specific order? Yes. Well, so I, I like to, I've separated the environments and the props. Yeah, and yeah, which it, is good. It goes from, yeah, yeah, it goes from left to right, as in newest to oldest. So, right. Okay. So we've got 
what you've got three props and then four environments is that how i'm reading yeah. that yeah okay so i guess we we can look at your props and just kind of like uh so this is nine months ago so we're gonna look yeah, so... yeah go ahead go. Oh, i was gonna say this is um probably the oldest thing i think of my portfolio um mm. okay so I'm we won't, not we won't I... judge it too hard <laughs> It's either this or the Victorian scene. I, I, I honestly can't remember. I was making stuff so quickly um, that it yeah. all blurs together. <laughs> oh, man. Are these manually lauded? Yes, they are. Yeah. Dude, that's hardcore. Yeah. Um, I was like, I really want to try. I, I, I usually use um, Unreal Engine's automate, automated one. Yeah. So I really wanted to try, you know, doing it myself. And there, there is some some learning to that right where if yeah. you do it yourself it, there's a there's a really good way of going about it if you're if you're doing it yourself um and and going through that process i think is important because it makes you appreciate <laughs> it makes you appreciate auto lotting so much more um yeah exactly <laughs> i mean it, it it does a really good job i think if you were to show if you were really wanting to show lots or if you were wanting to be a technical artist and there was like showing the how much you're controlling lot lotting distances you'd probably want a video where you go like away from the object and close the object and showing yeah, the the yeah. pop between the the lots but um i mean that's that's pretty we don't we don't need to focus on that too much a lot of the times i would say it's auto lotting nowadays i remember when you had to do it manually but that's that's almost gone at this point unless you're mobile or um uh unless the company doesn't have a way to auto lot then then you're going to be doing it manually but yeah I won't, I won't judge this one too much i would say like the the thing that was that stuck out to me the most was the the harder edges on the frame which i know cameras with these yeah, metal yeah. bodies tend to be like razor sharp for whatever reason uh I think gamifying it a little bit and just beveling those edges just a little bit is going to help with with those hard edges, yeah. and then it's it's just about the roughness and understanding what the material is and and like how it reacts to lighting. But I think we'll we'll leave that for some of your more uh, recent work, uh, looking at like how you're doing materials now. The skateboard, I love the thumbnail, like the edge might be really it might be too close, yeah. but. Uh, if if it's too close, it's too close by like five pixels. Like it could just go down just a little <laughs> yeah, bit, and yeah. you'd be fine. Um, skateboards are quite interesting of an asset because you get so much character in it, and there's there's like stories that you can put into them. Man, I remember skateboards that were shaped like this. <laughs> uh, I don't know. The, I'm sure they still make them like that, but the tr trick boards, I don't know. Um, yeah, this this looks pretty cool. Did you make the artwork on the underside here? Um, no. So how I came about making this is a friend sent me like a picture of it, um, and he was like, "You should make this." And I was like, "Yeah, that looks that looks so cool." And the picture was like this super low res JPEG image, <laughs> and you could barely make out the the uh, design. Yeah. So I kind of just went over in Photoshop and kind of I guess. Um, HDified it. I don't know. Just made it HD. Just like kind of drew over it, you know, Photoshop yeah. magic, just to make it a lot bigger to work with. Um, but yeah, no, it's cool. It it has a consistency to it in the, just the way that the line art is on it that it just works. But uh, yeah. yeah, this this all looks pretty good. I think the thing that's sticking out for me in this skateboard is the the darkness of the wheels. Um, the sticker on the back here feels really thick. I think it's a sticker, yeah, right? Yeah, the label is the one thing I hate about this skateboard. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking when I, I, I made that. <laughs> it looks yeah, the crumbles. Um, <laughs> it just, it just yeah, it feels really yeah. thick, like it's padded, like it's a padded yeah. sticker. Um, and then maybe the metal is too dark. I don't know what the. I don't think you have any images of the albedo in here. No, I might have a mom set for you. Yeah, you let's see here. Because, like, it might be... Uh, the albedo. Yeah, so, like, when you have metals, right? Like, this is yeah. metal, isn't it? Um, metals are, metals are yeah, going to be pretty I, dark, but I don't know what this material is, so... I think it's, like, a dark plastic. 
Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, yeah. yeah. Dude, crazy. Yeah, because if it was a metal, like my brain would assume that's a metal. Uh, to be assessed, it's usually painted metal. Nice. Okay. So if this is a painted metal, I think the way you've authored it is it's more of a plastic. So we can't really comment it on the, in the same way. Because like in here, this looks uh, quite a bit better just because yeah. the, the albedo is... Um, is more accurate to the the color. Metals are usually quite um, bright, but that's in a like in a metal uh, metal. How would you say it? Metal roughness workflow versus like in Marmoset. I think it's a spec gloss. Like there's a reflectivity, and then the gloss yeah, is, yeah. is separate. Um, but at least in like Unreal, for example, metals are going to be quite bright. Um, and you can just look at a chart for that. The and then the wheels, the wheels just throw me off because I never see wheels that are like green. And I <laughs> and I think if the wheels are more of that kind of like bone bone white, you would probably yeah. get a little bit better of a contrast between the dirt and the wheel itself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, dude, this art. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Um no, but overall, like it's, it's a cool, it's a cool prop. I think um We'll just we'll keep digging through here. This one, everyone in chat is saying is trending like crazy, or uh, was? Yeah, it, I published this yesterday actually. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a lot of character in the in the material. Yeah, and this is a day ago, so this is probably the most up to date uh, material understanding you have. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Okay. Let's. Yeah, dude. When you go to Albedo only, man, there's a lot of love put into that. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was just stencils. how long did you work on this? Stencils. Um it's hard to say. This was such an on and off project. I the like the whole modeling with the low poly, high poly, unwrapping and baking, that took I did that, I don't know. I probably worked on it for probably like an hour or two a day, like two weeks maybe. Okay. And then the, the texturing, I just I did it in like two, maybe three days, but they were like eight hour days right so you were uh, you were deep in it for a while then yeah i i really like the textures though it's um i've been really liking like texturing stuff recently so right as soon as i got to texturing i just wanted to kind of nail it out and um I, I learned a lot of new stuff as well when i was texturing this nice was there anything that you're like wh that was a game changer to you with this <laughs> um yeah well it was stencils mainly in the substance painter so um I think it was Jay Cummins' hand drill video. Yeah, I it's a really good. Uh, it's a really good one. Uh, and when I was watching him use like the stencils, I was like, "How have I never thought of this?" I was like, "What the hell?" And then I was just, I was just making stencils like crazy and just applying them where I could. And I was like, "Yeah, this is awesome." Oh, you were making your own. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was doing what he did and went to like uh, textures. dot com <laughs> or like the textures ninja, I think. And you mm -hmm. download your own, and then in Photoshop you like convert it into a um, into like a texture, uh, right. into a stencil alpha. I'm trying to understand, because like when you look at the albedo only, it's pretty easy on the eyes, but I think uh, when it goes to the textured or like the full material version, it's this uh, this noisy, dirty, this dirt stuff. Yeah. Um. It's got a different roughness profile to it, right? Like it's it's much more reflective, like a wet kind of. Yeah, yeah, the dirt. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out. It feels very, uh, like I, I guess the the only word to describe is like a noisy, because when I look at it like untextured, this actually looks more pleasing to my eye, other than the fact that there's no lighting really. Um, I wonder if getting a roughness that's closer to between the two materials would make it easier to to look at in the viewer. I mean, when I when I go up and I look at it here, it's it's also quite busy. Yeah. Um, but do the materials look like there's so much character going on in the paint chipping that it just yeah, it feels really nice. And I like this break up here because this is like everything you're like, okay, yeah, this is modeled and like it's 3D, but then you add a detail like this and then you add a detail over here that kind of breaks the edge so it's not just it's not just a modeled corner. Yeah. Um 
and then you have this there's just enough variety to break it up to make it feel natural versus like a modeled mesh um but uh yeah i think the only thing i would say is it's really contrasty and i think maybe that's where the noise is coming from i'm not sure if that's the marmoset um, viewer or like yeah i i, I probably went maybe a bit too over on the sharpen filter yeah in, it feels uh, really crunchy <laughs> in marmoset um but in my head it's like Higher sharp and higher sharpness equals like more high def. <laughs> You're like ultra real yeah. life. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, I think right. if you were to lower it by like, let's say it was at 100%, if you were to lower it to like 80%, that would probably be enough yeah. to get away from the because it's it's really crunchifying everything. Uh, yeah. whereas like if you want that kind of high deafness, maybe you could do it in the um, it, what this is textured in Substance Painter. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could do that in the masks if you're doing it with if you're doing a lot of the stuff with masks. You could do yeah. a sharpen on the mask yeah. itself, and that'll tighten up the 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 interpolation between materials while not letting like the normal get crunchy as like a post process. Because like with Marmoset, right? It's gonna it's sharpening everything. Yeah, yeah. And uh, sure. I think if you do that with just the mask, you'll probably get closer to the result you're looking for. But um, no, nah, this, I mean, dude, the, the character in, in the prop is like crazy. It's, it's super yeah. nice. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, nice work with this one. Oh, yeah, dude. I'm like, I hadn't even looked at the, the paint on there. Yeah, see that difference between these two? That's, people love that. There's something about like uh, contrasting roughness. This is like why I like roughness variation. And I always talk about it. <laughs> The moment you can see metal next to paint next to uh, like a wood surface and they all have different like roughness profiles as well as like one being metallic it it does so much for like the definition of the asset like this spot here that's probably my favorite <laughs> yeah, favorite part of the awesome. asset that's, that's that's my favorite spot as well <laughs> is, yeah because yeah. i mean the cracks as well are very um akin to like how you would expect it to crack yeah so it just feels it feels good anyways let's uh let's let's hop through these scenes real quick yeah. and uh we can get to your 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 last one you said this one's one of the oldest ones as well yeah i'm not too sure what came first i actually can't remember this other camera um i think they were actually i was probably making them at the same time honestly um did you look at chris radsby's scene this feels like chris radsby <laughs> Is his the one with the um with all the crosses the on the wall? He's got it's like tons of crosses. I mean, oh yeah, I think he was on my reference board, yes. There was yeah. a few. There was a few, <laughs> yes. Dude, it, yeah, I think he's got like, I don't know, a thousand crosses on that wall. Like it's <laughs> just crazy. But I, I mean yeah. overall the scene the scene looks pretty good. The blood looks uh the blood actually looks a little scaled up, and it's maybe because you didn't have enough uh, yeah, I probably tried to fill that out with uh, yeah. with decals instead of meshes. And it's the same with the the splatter on the wall. I mean, is that just a uh, like a projected decal? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Um, this uh, this was me using virtual cam. I don't know if, if you. I think it's called virtual cam. It's where you can like use your phone to like record like a sequence in Unreal Engine. That is so huge, man. This... And I really wanted to give it a go, so... Yeah. There it is. You said virtual cam? Uh, yeah. Because this might be... Dude, it, that's crazy. Because you could put, like, a stabilizer on your on your phone. Mm. And maybe, like, stabilize the movement. And then with that, you could get the camera movements that you really want without having to know as much about how cameras work in Unreal. Yeah, it, it, it's quite hard to do on, like, quite a small phone, though, because there's, like, so many controls to, like, zoom in and out. And then my phone would, like, overheat, like, after a minute. <laughs> and it would just, the, the app would, like, crash, and I'd have to, like, set it down for, like, five minutes and then give it another go. <laughs> so, yeah. That is really interesting, though. I, uh, um, while it is a little wobbly, that and that might be the intention, it's kind of creepy, right? Um, yeah. It's really cool. Like the results is is really interesting, and I think 
if you were to put a little bit more time into like uh researching how to use that i mean this is this is kind of like how how film is going right now right where they're they're yeah, starting yeah. to digitize the camera into the into a digital scene but the cameraman is actually in the physical world uh, yeah this is cool oh this is a nice presentation as well for the asset dang dude the sky on the ground is that in any of the shots oh yeah it's right here <laughs> yeah uh, it's a tough it's a tough day man tough day for that guy yeah just napping he's just taking a nap that's how i sleep <laughs> I, with a hand on a book <laughs> on the floor <laughs> um no the assets look pretty good considering like you're saying how old this is it's nine months um again it's the i think with the older ones they're the legs in the back of the chair look a little thin and then the um the roughness difference between the the wood and the this material i don't know what that material is is it like a i guess like a leather maybe like a leather okay uh, yeah I, i'm not too sure yeah because <laughs> if you sure right <laughs> if yeah. you could diffuse that more in the roughness yeah. then that would help the blood stick out more and then, like the yeah. the wood material would be able to stick out uh, away from this material as well. Uh, yeah, just mm -hmm. those details. That is a shiny gramophone. It's super reflective. I don't know if that's like too far or not. It feels too far, but I don't know. Yeah, I would probably agree with you. To be honest, <laughs> it does feel very shiny right now. Yeah. It could just be like it just needs that aging pass and the roughness, right? Yeah. Um, but no, this is this is nice, man. Uh, there's maybe some saturation issues with the albedo, where the saturation is just going just a little too high. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's 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 cool. We we've got the uh, so we, what do we've got? Like we've got eight ish minutes. Uh, did you want to look at either of these or have questions about these two scenes, or did you um, want to just look at the waterfall bridge? I mean, we can just go straight onto the waterfall bridge. Um, so those two were done quite close, so the progress these is ones? huge. Yeah. Oh, and the quality? The, the, yeah, the progress, I mean, I kind of stay around the same quality for a bit, and then my waterfall bridge, I jump up a tiny bit more. So. Yeah, I'm just going to scroll through it so I can see the... I always love these, these GIF breakdowns where you, yeah. you show I, like how, how it happened. Yeah, I always try to include them if I remember to take the screenshots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would be nice if Unreal would allow you to um, set up a camera that takes a screenshot every time you're closing the project. Oh yeah, that would be that would be a great feature. This this is nice too, showing you like your understanding of like making a like a material that is more expansive. Yeah, I kind of went a bit overboard with the parameters in this one, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, it shows your. You're thinking about that stuff though, which is good. Um, cool. Yeah, I'm just scrolling through this. Nice, dude. It's so it's so difficult to make statues as an environment artist. <laughs> yeah, I used the base mesh and then just kind of added a skirt and the the headgear. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> yeah, I mean that works. Very hard. It just feels a little thin, I guess, uh, for the yeah. headgear where it meets the where it meets the head. But that dude, that's exactly how you should do it if you're not comfortable and you're just starting out um i'm just scrolling through these real fast oh i like that scene this also looks like a uh martin hoff scene uh, yeah in the description i actually said it was it was actually inspired oh yeah by, uh, <laughs> martin oh i see it now i see it. dude it's such a short line too i should have seen that yeah oh that's super funny no, really nice. And and clearly, I mean, this is five months ago, right? You're you're definitely getting better at your material work. Yeah. Um but yeah, let's let's look at the the most recent one. Um which which cracks me up because the moment I saw the scene, I was like, dude, <laughs> that's that's uh that's Ilya. I, I used yeah. to work with this guy. I remember when he was painting oh, nice. this. Yeah, I remember when he was painting this. He's the guy that um, uh, I blew his mind when he's like, I don't get why Photoshop doesn't have rulers or like straight lines. And I'm like, dude, you're using a Cintiq. Just put a ruler on the Cintiq. 
<laughs> and he looked at me and then his mind i saw his mind explode like there was like a black hole and like beginning of a universe behind his eyes uh <laughs> um bringing physical world objects it, into you're like what uh no yeah. that was really funny i wasn't even mid-level yet i think i was still a junior at the time but this is uh dude adding a character um does so much for a scene I know, right yeah before i added the character this scene just felt a little off and as soon as i added it it was just like damn was, was it the that scale that was weirding you out yeah yeah it was it was the scale yeah because there's not there's not really a lot that you can relate with for helping you understand the scale there's i mean there's the lantern yeah. here but i mean that's kind of that's kind of it um Oh, that's interesting. You don't have the character in the in this video. Yeah, I, the reason is because I I mean it's an asset star character and it didn't really come with animations, so I didn't want him just like kind of standing there like dead still while I was <laughs> yeah. zooming onto him. Uh, I thought it was a bit weird. I mean, I, I include him right at the end for that really dramatic nighttime shot, mm -hmm. but he's got his like cape like flailing in the wind so it's not too bad yeah that that cape really helps with the i mean with this seeing this character it's very dark souls all of a sudden yeah I, as soon as i added him in i was kind of that's the first thing that came to my mind oh this is super cool as well i so let me um look at the so i i didn't i i, I wanted to base it fully off this and kind of go for like for a one for one yeah. But then I start to like drift away as I start to make it, and also yeah, I mean it's really condensed in here. Yeah. In the concept. Like the com yeah, the complexity of the rocks and the concept. I was just like, I don't have time for this. <laughs> it was, it's, this was for like an, uh, a university uh, assignment. Yeah. Um, I was like, yeah, I don't have time for that. <laughs> I'm just gonna kind of dumb it down a bit, I guess. Um, and then it kind of expanded into like me adding foliage and yeah. Yeah, the foliage does a lot, I think, for like just adding that complexity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really nice, yeah. man. Um, is there anything that uh, anything that you wanted to com for me to comment on overall with it? Holy crap, you sculpted the whole thing. Yeah, so. The main reason I actually did this scene was to mainly practice my ZBrush, like sculpting. Mm. Um, so I wanted to pretty much sculpt everything, like everything I made in the scene, I wanted to throw into ZBrush. And yeah, yeah, that eats so hours, much time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that eats so much time, uh, but I mean, dude, it's, I, oh, go ahead. Uh, no, I was just going to say, and then I covered it all up with foliage. So you I was just going to say that. I was like, yeah, yeah, I mean, all that sculpting work, and then you're like, I'm just going to cover it up with the... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. when, when you pan up this, it is it is pretty clear that there's a lot of work put into like the way it's sculpted and the, and the details of the surfaces. Because it is all about, with this type of surface, it's all about carving and, and like the edge chipping and the, the patterns that are yeah. carved into it. But I, I really like how the overgrowth just kind of comes over the the edges of it. It's super yeah. nice. Um I'm trying to see if there's like I think the weakest part about this scene is the waterfall. And waterfalls are not easy. Yeah, uh, yeah, go agree. It's like I'm looking at it now and it's just like I'm pretty sure it's like full white. <laughs> it's like part of the waterfall. And then oh, it yeah? draws your eye to it like way too much. Let me um, see if uh Cause there's a there's a video of it. Where is that at? Do I scroll back past it? Oh, it is this one. Yeah, cause there there's a moment I see it in chat as well. I think it's Navy Cloud says it. Yeah, uh, it looks like the the particles spawn in. Is that just happen to be? Um, honestly, might, I, oh no, uh, it's just a break it in the texture. The, it might have just been the panning texture at that point decided to show up. I'm not too sure. Um, I think I think the waterfall was from like a, um, I pulled it out of my like Unreal library from like the yeah. three assets I usually get every month. So um, I think um, yeah. one thing you can 
like this the waterfall offers like if, if you get a few more particles in there right and you just kind of break it up the waterfall yeah. offers you this opportunity where like uh under under the bridge for example like if we scroll up and just copy this and bring it into photoshop um it gives you the opportunity to dis or like explain a fog that you're not seeing or like yeah. uh to make sense out of that i'm just gonna eyeball this Ugh. let's uh we'll go way out here and then let's put that off so like that area for example um you could uh, let's see here i remember how to how to photoshop um like we were doing in the in the other scene where if you like lighten that up and then use that as like the fog and then we go in and just like all of a sudden the bridge pops out more yeah and then you start to understand like the depth under the bridge right whereas like before you, you didn't know it was there um mm -hmm. that can that can do a lot for depending on like how how much time you have and stuff um and I think, honestly, I think when it comes down to it, if you can't get like a height fog that would work for you in that area, it is, it would technically be okay for you to do a Photoshop tweak like this. Yeah, I, I mean, most of the fog in this scene, I use um, fog cards. Do you know what the default fog cards from that, um, that one Unreal project scene? No. Um, I can't remember who I, there was like this artist, um, uh, I don't know. I watched one of his like cinematic environment tutorials, and he uses like this fog card, and you can kind of pick. You can just literally take it from like oh, one of the demos. Oh yes, and... yeah, 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 dude. It's so funny uh, because game development's the same way. Yeah. Someone, someone makes and... a single thing that works really well, and then everyone just keeps using it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's great. Uh, this is the first scene I used them on, and I'm probably just gonna keep exporting them to every new scene I make now. <laughs> Dude, well, do you have uh, do you have any questions before I I jump onto the the next one? Because like this scene uh, looks pretty good, and I mean, nah, um, I, I hope you uh, figure out uh, some work real soon because this stuff looks nice, man. Um, no, actually, I don't have really any questions. I don't want to keep the next person waiting. Do you know uh, what you want to work on next? Um, no, I. I don't have the time right now. I'm, I'm trying <laughs> to finish off my, my dissertation right now. Oh, uh, God. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad I missed that boat. I didn't have um, to do any of that stuff. <laughs> and Yeah. And I, I actually recently got a job offer, so oh. I'm kind of working all that stuff out as well. So Nice. Well, yeah. ping, me, ping me in the server when, when that goes down and we can give you that yellow tag. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I think I start this month. <laughs> I'm not too sure. Oh, man. <laughs> we're still... We're still that's why I'm trying to rush my dissertation right now. We're still trying to, like, sign stuff out. It's a bit mm. awkward uh, with the timing right now. But, yeah, everything's just a bit hectic. Dude, but, crazy. Yeah. Okay, well. Yeah. I guess we'll, we'll leave it with that then. I was like, I don't need to help yeah. you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's always nice, though, hearing someone else's insight on on the pot, on your portfolio. Nice. Yeah, it's uh there's some nice work in here and I can tell you're you're getting better with each piece, so it's going to be interesting to see what the next one looks like. It'll probably be a shipped game, so. Let's <laughs> yeah. hope. Yeah. But all right, man. Okay. I guess uh I'll talk to you later then. Yeah, yeah, nice talking to you. Nice yeah, have a good one. You. Yeah, you too. Cheers.